Hello everyone, this is Wendy. Um, we just want to thank uh, Susan today for sharing with us. Susan will tell more about herself in a minute. Um, but one thing, I, a few things we do know, Susan's from um, Hong Kong and she's been working in a school, um, the American International School with a very good um, Moodle set up there. Um, also, just to sort of advertise, Andrew Chu has also been presenting from that school and you can have a look at some of his sessions later. We'll hand over to you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And hello, Michelle. And hello to anyone who's joining us later on and listen to this recording. So welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Susan Holt. And yes, I'm presenting from the American International School here in Hong Kong. A very turbulent day here in Hong Kong. Uh, with a T Typhoon 3 warning, some dark clouds, but the show will go on. So um, this presentation then to the Mark Scheme and beyond, um, with a little bit of help from outer space. Okay, so first of all, before we talk about what we aim to get to in this session, my name is Susan Holt, and as I said, I'm at the American International School in Hong Kong. I teach English and drama in the high school. I teach English to the grade 12s. I teach two courses. One is a British literature course, and the other being the AP literature and composition course. I also teach senior drama here at the school. Um, a lot of what I'm talking about today will focus on one of those courses, but I'll say it now and reiterate it through the presentation. What I'm going to share with you today can be applied to any course, any subject. Okay, so they're just some pictures of me here at school with our fantastic students. Okay. So, aim of today's session then, I just want to um, share with you my ideas, um, well, um, how we've developed Gradebook here um, at American International School, especially um, what we've done with senior English this year in articulating our grades on Gradebook from a mark scheme that I use. Um, just a bit of background as well, sorry. Um, I'm very new to Moodle. I only started here at AIS in August when I first learned about Moodle. So um, if I can do any of this, then I'm sure you guys can. So a bit of background from the course that I'll be, um, that we're going to look at the grade book for. This is the course here that you can see. This is taken from my Moodle page. This is what the students see when they go into my course. Um, it's just um, interesting here because we're going to be talking about the assignments that are linked with these different texts um, and how we put those into grade book. Okay, so. Um, this is the mark scheme that I use for senior English, so grade 12 English. It's um, a mark scheme I developed for the Common Core state standards um, because we're an American school. But what I'm going to talk to you about can be applied to any mark scheme. From, it could be applied to your IB mark scheme, AP mark scheme, as I'll show you, um, A level, any course, any mark scheme. As you'll see, this one here, it's actually out of 20. So I have um, four key concepts um, worth five marks each. So it's out of 20. So I arrived in August, and I started grading my students their essays. And I was giving them a score out of 20, which then I put into a percentage. And so if my students got 10 out of 20, which is not um, a terrible score at the start of the year, they would then be getting 50%. And if you look here, this is from a high school handbook for the teachers, you'd see that actually anything below 60% is a U grade, and that means a fail. Now, being new to the American system, this is, uh, this is quite a shock to me, as trimester one report cards have never been so important in my teaching career. Um, I've been used to dealing with predicted grades, um, so the importance of T1 was quite a new phenomenon for me. So I needed to somehow, um, I needed to change something because um, my mark scheme wasn't allowing for progress in the grade book. 
and my students weren't happy because they were getting poor grades on their grade book, which was then going on their report card, which has then been sent to university. So a score of 10, 12, 14 out of 20 as a percentage and then transferred into a letter grade for the GPA is seemingly quite poor. Um, so my students were not happy and neither was my dean of students. Look at him. He wasn't happy. So I needed to change things, which is when um, I'm very fortunate because we have Andrew Chu here in the school. So he helped me um, change things for my students. So um, what he did was um, he asked me, what does a grade A look like in term one in your course for reading? What does a grade B look like? What does a C look like? And then how would that look in T2? And how does that look in T3? So I described in my words, because I'm an English teacher, not a maths teacher, what that looks like for me and where I'd I would expect them to be on the mark scheme at different points in the year. And it's from that information that Andrew is then able to come up with this graph. So I'll just bring Andrew in now just to explain the maths, the numbers. Okay. Yeah, so um, along the bottom was uh, on the bottom this is uh, the grades on the mark scheme. And um, what we sort of talked about was, uh, it, it, so 60 is sort of that passing grade, so where would passing look like? In trimester one, which is the blue line, we decided we sort of, you know, maybe six um, on the mark scheme, but then by trimester two, you're moving up to maybe uh, eight, and then and 10 to be passing by trimester three at the end of the, the year. Um, and we also just try to calibrate it also as well to the, um, what was 100%, what was so the green line is 100% up here. So 100% in trimester one, it correlates down to maybe like a 14 on the mark. mark. So it's just a linear um, equation that we sort of set up. Um, but we had, we found our three equations to um, try and show, or try and show that growth over the year. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Okay, so that's the maths behind it. Um, and Andrew actually did similar maths, well, some more maths with uh, different courses of mine for different assignments. But so this was the graph that I was to use then for my reading assignments this year. So how does this look in gradebook? What changes does it make? So what I did then with Andrew's help. So you see here my first assignment, the Fellowship of the Ring Essay. The icon here just shows you that it was a Turnitin assignment. Just to check kids are not cheating. Um, so you can see there the raw score, this student got 5 out of 20. There we go, so 5, and that's the marks in there, out of 20. So that would come up at 25%. That was that student looking very sad. So, what we did was we created an extra assignment in the gradebook called the AIS, American International School Fellowship Grade. Okay. This was then our percentage. So the maths happened around here, the magic of gradebook. The maths was happening here. So it then came out to a grade uh, percentage of 55%. Still not quite passing, um, but still much healthier than the 25% would have got if my mark scheme was just translated directly onto a gradebook. And you'll see we did the same for assignments through the year. So we had a Beowulf commentary, again, a raw score of 17. The student made a lot of progress. And that actually correlated to 100% at that stage. Then moving through the year, a 15, a raw score. Again, we created that extra assignment, so it came out at 95%. Now, what the students then see, sorry, what the, so the students get to see this page throughout the year. They get to see their raw scores. Because I only talk in terms of my mark scheme. Okay, um, my job here as an English teacher, um, I, I say to my students, I'm here to help you develop your English. Um, I'm not so concerned with your final report card mark. So I'm only interested in your raw scores and how you 
are progressing in my course. So I can still focus on these raw scores and the students fully understand their raw scores, but they can also see the percentage for the AIS grade. I say in the gradebook they can still see the raw score, which is very important for me and the students. So these raw scores, though, you may be asking yourself, well, what about the calculations for the total grade? This is where the weighted means come in. Okay, so you see here we have it's weighted at zero. The original raw score assignment is weighted at zero, but then the AIS grade that we've created is worth one. Okay, and that goes through. So all the raw scores you can see are weighted at zero, but all the assignments are weighted, are equally weighted at one apiece. So, oh, Michelle, you have a question. Do you have issues with parents understand the difference between raw and adjusted? Um, for me, my, um, my main priority and concern, like, like yours would be, is the student, and they understand the system. Um, the parents don't necessarily go into gradebook. It's not something at the moment they readily have access to or question. Um, the grade that they see is the report card grade. Um, and, and because of the calculations we've done in gradebook, there aren't, um, yeah, I don't get any difficult questions. Yeah, and they're more likely, I would just put in there and say, they're more likely to see the letter grade that the percentages come out to. So if they, they wouldn't actually even see that 55%, they would see it as failing. Or they'd see, you know, 90% and they'll say, oh, that's an A minus. And they, and they, they have a lot more uh, understanding about uh, what an A, what a B, what a C looks like. So what we've done here is we're actually articulating that model scheme into language or, or an expression that the parents understand a bit better. Thank you, Andrew. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. So how do we actually do this and how do we make the magic happen? So with once I've created this almost dummy assignment, then the AIS assignment, okay, I then go to this part here, it says edit, and then the three lines. It's probably some fancy technical term for three lines. No, okay, those three lines. Click that, and then we go into edit calculation here. Right, this is where the magic happens. It will then ask you to create ID numbers. This really confused me at first because of the term ID numbers. It means you've got to give an identity to the raw score assignment you want to calculate. So if you look here, I've actually already created all the ID numbers. But when it says numbers, it just means you can type in a word, type in anything. It doesn't have to be a number. I think that's what confused me. <laughs> OK. Um, so here you see I just typed in fellowship, my fellowship of the Ring essay. And again, Beowulf, my Beowulf essay. What that does, once you've entered the ID number, number, actually it's a word, um, it then means that Gradebook knows what score to then calculate. So it knows to calculate my fellowship of the Ring AIS grade, it needs to take the fellowship raw score grade. So it's given an identity, a code, for that raw score. It's telling the gradebook where to find the raw score mark. Okay. So after we've created the ID number, we can then create the calculation. Okay, so I've given this this item name. So this is my new assignment, the AIS grade. And then the calculation here, which Andrew explained, along here and you can see there this fellowship that's that ID number so it's telling gradebook to grab that raw score times it by five and plus 30 which will then create the percentage to put in the letter grade okay um, the reason why it's min 100 here so it doesn't go off the top of the graph and create 110 percent for example I don't know if that explains it mathematically well enough, but that's how I understand it. So it can't go above 100%. So 
that's how we create the calculation and that's how we are telling gradebook what to do with that raw score okay we've already told gradebook the raw score is worth nothing because we've given it a weighted value of zero now we're telling gradebook take that fellowship raw score times it by five and plus 30. okay so again you see the raw score with zero the AIS grade is weighted at one okay. and you can see how that would then look so this is um, my class here you can see you have fellowship of the ring these are my raw scores out of 20 and then we can see how the AIS fellowship grade was translated into a percentage which then goes to our numbers more effect um, our letter grades in fact I need to change my grade book there to put it into the letter grades for me but that's the good thing about gradebook. You can configure it to show whatever information you want, be it a percentage like I've got here, but it can also magically put that into our AIS letter grade, okay, which I've done further on in the course. So students then at 15 out of 20 are then getting 100% in trimester one. Okay, and if you see by trimester, then if we look, here we have our Christmas Carol calculation and here okay so Christmas that's the raw score I want gradebook to access times it by five and now plus 20 because they should have learned how to write an essay by this point okay again it's just allowing for that progress and it's building in expectations of progression through the year thank you Wendy okay and then we see um, Macbeth Okay, so this is the um, final essay they've just done for me, the reading assignment. Again, that raw score taken from the assignment called Macbeth, we times it by five, and now we just plus 10. And here you can see my grade book. So I have a Christmas cow here, raw score, and the AIS score there. So you can see, um, let me find a corresponding grade. So 17 out of 20, gives it 100% in trimester 2 and in trimester 3, 17 gets you 95. Okay, you can see, say, a, um, a 13 is worth 85% in trimester 2, and then a 13 is worth only 75% by trimester 3. I'm hoping they've made progress by that point. I'm expecting them to have made progress. And that's how they feel after we've done this. Okay. Um, and they understand. They, the students, um, the students um, are quite obsessed with grade book and are always calculating scores and percentages and, and letters. Um, so they take a very keen interest in their scores. And so this is how they feel once I've put their scores into grade book. But for me, um, as a teacher, as an educator, I can still talk to them in terms of the original mark scheme and their original raw scores. So, and it just allows them to understand fully how they are progressing through the course. Briefly then, just to show you how I've done this across courses. So then I go to my AP Lit mark scheme. Again, it's the examiner in me. I'm a stickler for um, sticking to the same mark scheme through the year. Um, and I, I feel they should have the actual mark scheme from the exam from August. So here's um, half of the mark scheme. Um, the, the other pages, I've added it for the attachments for you to look at. So here's my AP Literature essay mark scheme out of nine. And again, you can see how in Gradebook, I've, um, I worked with Andrew. We've got some different calculations. But again, Andrew's asking me at the start of the year, Okay, what does a grade A look like in trimester one for AP Lit? What does it look like in trimester two? What does it look like in trimester three? So you can see here, you know, a, a four out of nine is a B minus, is an 80 in trimester one. But by trimester two, a four is now worth C. Okay, actually you can see here I've done it for this course. Um, I've actually got the letter grade to go with it and um, you see here I've got 80 which is well, at our school and 80 means B minus 
That was from the third slide I showed you earlier. Okay. There's my Dean of Students after my working grade book, very happy. Not happy with me, but happy with the uh, scores and the reports that were then um, going out. So um, yeah, my Dean of Students and Principal are very happy once we've made these calculations. So there you have it. Um, you two can go to the mark scheme and beyond. Um, as I say, the, the value of this is that it can be applied to any course, any subject. I do it with drama. With drama, I use um, scales, actually, um, which is another, that'll be in another Moodle event. But um, we actually use scales to do similar calculations. OK, any questions? Michelle, <laughs> Wendy. Um, I don't have any questions. I think it was um, brilliant. It was so so fascinating for me to see in particular, um, as you know, my background's in drama and English. And um, since I've been involved in Moodle, I have never had the opportunity to use it as a teacher. And um, uh, your session in particular, because a lot of them are related to sort of different areas. I think it's the first one I've seen related to drama and a lot to English, so it's fantastic for me to see. Because um, I'll be back in the classroom soon one day. Um, but thank you so much for your time and the huge effort. And I love that your session, you really got the theme of iMOOC this year. And I think we'll have to create a special badge for those who actually do the theme. So thank you very, very much. And thank you to all the other participants in your room, because if there's anybody else watching there, so hello to his staff if there are any. <laughs> um, and if you have any questions, don't forget for anyone watching this recording um, that you can always use the forums and you can contact Susan through the forums or just put them in general forums and then we'll be able to answer those questions for you and be able to pass them over to Susan who will be able to help you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you.